Hey there everybody, welcome to another episode of Bert's Bike. Well, I just added a new bike to the garage, and it is the BMW R18. And it is a beautiful bike. I did a review on this before, and after doing that review, it just really kind of stuck with me and kept coming back into my mind. So. Uh, my local dealer was having an amazing deal on them, so it was time to do it, and I got it. So this is the first ride of my new R18. Let's go for it. <clears throat> All right. It is a big boy. It is definitely heavy to pick up off the side stand and everything like that, just the way I remember it. I love this paint scheme, and... Yeah, everything about it is great. Let's get going. Woo! That startup never gets old. Alright, let's freaking do this. That engagement point is a pretty good spot. Baby. Ah, this is awesome. Look at these huge potholes. Ugh. One thing about some of these dealerships in Nashville is that they're right in the in the heat of it. And they got these huge, huge, huge potholes. No wonder they're pushing the tire and wheel warranty. Alright, this is the first ride on this new R18 and it is feeling pretty good. One thing I love on this one is uh, the stock bars are pretty much perfect. I don't see me changing that out anytime soon. The rollback is pretty much perfect. And just feels really great. This is actually the same road that I went on when I did my test ride. And um, <laughs> it just feels different now that the bike is actually mine. But, you know, the one thing that I still have to get used to is when you're taking off from a stop, uh, the engine does shake a little bit. Uh, more and it almost feels like you're about to kill the bike so uh, I've been pretty generous on the gas and that guy looked like he was about to come out and hit me so I've been pretty generous on the gas and feathering the clutch out but I think that's just something to get used to oh the heated grips were on oops and they work so one thing I really love about this bike is the suspension so um, I don't think it's uh, performance suspension by any means, but it feels uh, very taut. And um, that might translate into a rougher ride on slower roads or when you're just hitting bumps. But when you're actually, you know, leaning the bike in and applying throttle, it makes for a very, very planted ride. Like the bike isn't shimmying around or anything. And another reason why I bought this bike is that the way that it is, it's a bike that you're okay to ride slowly. Like, it feels good to ride it slowly. It makes you want to cruise and just enjoy your surroundings. Like, you can kind of forget about the bike and just enjoy nature and the aesthetic around you. Another thing that came on this model that wasn't on the year before that I ridden, I think I rode a 22. I don't think it came with heated grips. It just came with, this one has heated grips and cruise control. I don't think the one I test drove had um, heated grips or cruise control. So, so no matter how much I try to get away from cruisers, I always keep coming back to them. And compared to like a bike like my Bonneville or Z900, as far as handling characteristics, the weight of it, on paper those are all kind of negatives, right? But 
it's just a different thing. With motorcycles, it's not really only about the performance or how good it does something, but it's how it makes you feel, really. And what I love about this bike is it just makes me feel in control and in the ride as well. It just is a big presence. Let's get that out of the way. Got a huge, huge engine, lots of power. Although the power delivery is pretty tame, actually. It's not gonna rip your arms off or anything like that. Really good, good delivery of power. So at a standstill like this, the bike, bike does shake, but it's not uncontrollably shaking. Um, my old bike was a Roadster and that was just... So it just shakes enough to let you know that that big, huge engine is sitting right there. So pretty freaking awesome. Also these mirrors are really nice. I don't see me changing those out. Metal, solid. The optics on them look really good. I gotta test out this cruise control here in a little bit. Yeah, this is what this bike does. It's just a really big commanding German whale. Man, this is what I love about it. It's just, it's over the top, but yet so subtle and good. And it's gonna be an awesome cruiser. Um, another reason why I got this bike is that my daughter might start riding with me. And with my other bikes, even though they're standard bikes, they're pretty high off the ground. And I think this will be a little bit more approachable for her to get on the back and ride with me. So just regular cruising, this bike likes to live at like 23, 2500 RPMs so far. And just feels really good. One thing I gotta love about this, the hefty, hefty kickstand. Um, some bikes I have are just, the kickstand is just an afterthought, really. However, when you're riding, you do sometimes hit it with the back of your heel. Um, it's just a, you know, you get used to that, but you know. All right, also another thing I just noticed is the turning uh, lock to lock on this is quite good. I mean, I'm just leaning into it. Pretty far there, it's quite good lock, lock to lock with the spike. And that engine turning on and the way it feels on startup, just oodles, oodles of character, man. Just loving it. See how easy it is to backpedal this thing? Pretty heavy. Yes, yeah, so when you got a big honking cruiser, you want to be pretty mindful of where you're going to park. You want to be parking facing uphill or the way you're going to exit. You do not want to have to push this thing. Yeah. I can already tell you this feeling wise for this. I much prefer this to my Indian Chief. Now, why is that? Um, I think the build quality is a little better. Quality of components. Things seem a little bit more stout and robust. There are more features on this bike. And then the engine characteristics. Now, if you like to kind of you know push your cruiser to the limit the chief might be the better option there for you if you want to get tons and tons of uh, engine performance out of it but this bike is not for that it is for just the sheer joy of motorcycling and just riding around enjoying your surround man i keep saying it riding around enjoying your surroundings and just enjoying life and the day and honestly i need more of that in my life just being happy to be alive being happy to be on a motorcycle being happy to be with my family that is really what it is about and i think this bike helps you get there <laughs> a little easier Yep. All right, so now for the size of this motorcycle, it is pretty eager to turn in. Pretty eager, actually, which is nice. Whew. I mean, a lot of guys that test drive this thing, right away they scrape the pegs that are much better riders than I am. But I'm not in it for that, but it does feel it's not a sporty ride, but it feels surprisingly sporty. 
for what it is, you know? What I like about this RPM computer here, I usually prefer like dual clocks, but I know that might mess up with the simplicity of what they're trying to accomplish with this bike. But um, it is pretty responsive, like it doesn't have a noticeable lag when you're flipping the throttle. Um, it doesn't seem to, um, like on on a, on the tenor ray I just rode, when you flip the throttle, there's like, you know, a half second delay or something to where it's like, you flip the throttle and it's like, whoop, okay, you flip the throttle, up. what you want is that immediate response. That way you have a more accurate representation of what the engine's doing at that given moment. I guess the last thing I didn't do is change modes. Now, I think I did in the original test ride, but let's do rock. All right, it is in rock, and it is, whoa, 100 noticeably more. Wow, it really changes the character of the bike from a smooth roll to like pretty instantaneous on the power there. Uh, let's see what it's like here at slow speed. Honestly, you can feel that uh, first gear takeoff a little better. Oof. Yeah. Honestly, I'm probably gonna leave it in roll mode. Yep. And it's pretty seamless there. Switching back and forth between modes. Um, so what it does is uh, when you're in between modes, it won't switch until you let go of the throttle or pull in the clutch, I believe. So that's what it was doing for me. Hmm. <laughs> I killed the bike! Yeah, you gotta look in regular roll mode. <laughs> when I was compensating for rock mode, I killed the bike. Now you want to be pretty deliberate with the gas on this thing and the clutch. Woo! <laughs> Killed the bike. We're going to leave that in there. Real life here, baby. But as of now, I'm pretty happy with my decision, but I'll update you guys as things go. Alright guys, let's, uh, let's park this thing and talk about it a little bit. All right. Super solid kickstand. All right. So let's just kind of talk about just a little bit about the bike, what I love about it, what drew me to it. I love the headlight design on this thing. Let's see if we can get it on here. Oh, I have to be closer to the bike. There we go. See how easy it is to find neutral. Easy enough, not terribly easy though. All right, so you can see there's a lot of vibes here in the bars, but not a crazy amount. Let's look at this headlight. Yep. Let's see what the the beams are like. High beam. Low beam. It's hard to tell in the sun. Pretty cool. You know what's funny is I thought this was a light here, but it's not. It's just a it's just a design. It just looks like that because of the reflections around it. It is not uh, this isn't a light here, it's a painted piece. But it gives the impression that it is, I guess. Pretty cool. Engine sounds awesome. Looks awesome. Yeah, man, BMW, just everything about it. Fit and finish is just A+. Plus. Yep, nice beefy forks. Um, one thing about this particular model, too, that I got was... Um, I don't like how they use the shrouded forks. 
and I like the exposed ones a little better actually. So that's something that uh, was a plus for me. Again, the paint is really good. Mine came with the pillion seat. It came with a lockable gas cap, cruise control, and heated grips. Super cool. There's nothing too much to say about this, just because it is just one big ol' wouldn't call it a muscle cruiser, but it's muscly. You know, I guess muscle cruiser would be sort of like hot rodded cruiser. Kind of like maybe the uh, maybe the Sport Chief or something like that from Indian. I mean, it's, it's a muscly looking bike, but I guess it's not a muscle cruiser. It's just a beautiful, awesome motorcycle. Now, is this motorcycle a bare bones bike? Um, other than the ride modes and the heated grips and cruise control, I guess there's not a whole lot of infotainment and stuff like that going on. For 2024, I guess it is kind of a bare bones motorcycle, but honestly, if it didn't have cruise control and it didn't have heated grips, I probably would buy it anyway. But those are just nice things to have, especially on a long drive and especially when you're somebody like me who rides in all types of weather. Well, so far, guys, I'm just really pleased with my purchase. Maybe we'll uh, look at it some more here in a little bit and just excited about this motorcycle. All right, guys, it's Bert's Bike. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below, and I'll catch you on the next one.